Big tech is an ever encroaching force in our lives. It's part of the reason why, every time I visit my local library, I move copies of 1984 and Brave New World from the fiction section to the nonfiction section. However, it seems like things may be getting better, with the cases that are being made to break up some of these monopolies, like Meta, formerly Facebook, and John Deere's monopoly on equipment repairs. With Facebook, we're looking at an antitrust suit that has been filed against them. Zuck's lawyers have filed a motion to dismiss the case, but a federal judge has denied that motion. The FTC argues that Facebook has been using the strategy of buy and bury to stifle competition, very similar to Microsoft's embrace, extend, and extinguish model, except buy and bury is a little bit more streamlined since Facebook doesn't even add on to these projects until it completely owns them. Some examples of this are how Facebook ended up acquiring Instagram and WhatsApp. You see, Facebook attempted to compete with these services before buying them for billions of dollars. Facebook is already a site where people often share photos just like they do on Instagram. But Instagram always was a superior platform to do this activity. Facebook couldn't compete, so they decided to buy Instagram for $1 billion. Same deal with WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger. WhatsApp was a vastly superior platform. So instead of improving Messenger to actually compete with WhatsApp, Facebook just decided to buy it for $19 billion. But this Tuesday, the judge overseeing the case, James Bosberg, ruled that the FTC can proceed with its bid to force Facebook to sell WhatsApp and Instagram. But don't celebrate just yet. Facebook still has time to fight back against this, so it's not over until the globalist propaganda machine is divided and conquered. Next on the chopping block of Monopoly claims is John Deere. Well, well, look at the city slicker pulling up on a stupid proprietary tractor. I have the class action lawsuit that has been filed against them right here. Now, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but this document is going to be linked in the description of this video if you would like to read over it for yourself. But one of the highlights that we are gonna go over is on page 12, so where it mentions the technology in John Deere tractors. Modern Deere tractors are technologically complex machines. These tractors run firmware that is necessary for the tractor to perform its basic functions. Without the firmware, the product is incomplete and will not run, making the firmware as vital a part of the basic functioning of a tractor as a steering wheel or an engine. The code that runs the internal engine and the transmission components that are required to make the tractor do anything are effectively part of the machine. The tractor will not operate without that code. The central computer on a tractor is the engine control unit or ECU. The ECU determines how and if the tractor functions. Like cars, John Deere tractors use a large number of sensors throughout the equipment that are constantly monitored by the ECU. When a sensor notices an error, no matter how small or serious, it can put the machine into limp mode, allowing farmers to move the machine slowly but not operate it fully. When the problem is diagnosed and repaired, the error code is cleared and the machine can continue working. According to a report from a U.S. public interest research group, the John Deere S760 Combine Harvester has 125 different computer sensors in it. If any one of those sensors throw an error code, the Combine will enter limp mode. Troubleshooting Deere tractors or interpreting the error codes requires software that Deere refuses to make available to the farmers that use this equipment. So much like Tesla's or pretty much any other modern vehicle that's filled with all kinds of spooky, unnecessary computers, the code running on these John Deere tractors is absolutely proprietary. And even the most mechanically inclined farmers cannot fix many of their tractors or combine harvesters problems because 
Those computers are essentially a black box that only authorized John Deere technicians can mess around with. Now, the situation is already bad enough in motor vehicles like the Tesla, but at least if you drive a Tesla, chances are you're a city slicker that can easily take it to a repair shop or have a technician come to you. But if you are a farmer in a rural area, obviously it's gonna be a lot harder for your tractor to get fixed. Taking it into the shop is basically not even an option. I mean, have you ever tried towing a tractor? It's an absolute nightmare. Not to mention a lot of the time these shops are located in a more busy part of the city where you might not even be allowed to have your tractor on the road in the first place. So you're most likely gonna have to wait for some guy to come down to your farm to fix it for you. And then chances are you're going to be outside of whatever jurisdiction they normally work in. So you're probably going to have to pay extra money to have someone to come all the way out to you and have your tractor serviced. And the whole time you could be losing money since a lot of farmers actually use their equipment commercially to put food on the table. And a lot of these things can't wait. There's very small windows for certain crops for when you can plant them and when you can harvest them. It's not like, oh, okay, my tractor guy has to come out, so I'm just gonna go ahead and plant the corn next month. No, that's not an option. If you don't plant the corn when it's time to plant it, then you're not going to get a crop that year, or at least your yields are going to be significantly reduced. Tractors are not a thing of leisure, like these city slickers with their fancy German car. So hopefully this class action lawsuit actually does get some traction. There's only so many used tractors that are out there in the world, which by the way, in case you didn't know, that is the best choice if you're looking to get one without any of that proprietary tomfoolery that you can actually go ahead and fix yourself. Now, the last story that I'll cover in this video isn't really about big tech, but it's about one of our favorite secure messaging platforms, Signal. I have some insiders in Langley, Virginia that have informed me that bioluminescent government agents have been posting FUD about Signal, both on Reddit and Mongolian basket weaving forums. So the claim here is that federal investigators were able to access encrypted Signal messages that were sent by the leader of the Oath Keepers, one of the groups that was involved in the Capitol riots back in January 6, 2021. and this information that was found, these messages were used to prosecute some of those guys. Now, assuming that this story isn't just complete FUD, there are a couple of ways that the feds can acquire messages from Signal. It's not a bulletproof solution, um, but there are ways to get stuff from it without actually compromising the service. One of those is if they have physical access to your phone. On older Android devices, the storage of signal messages are not encrypted by default. And even if they are encrypted, it's pretty trivial to access them if your signal pin is easy to guess, like your date of birth. But if we just apply Occam's razor to this story, I think it's pretty easy to figure out what happened. I think that the most likely scenario is that the leader of the Oath Keepers forgot rule number three. Never trust nobody. Your mom set that ass up properly gassed up. You see, Signal is just one component of secure communications. It's good to have, but it can ultimately be defeated if you aren't using secure hardware with an up-to-date secure operating system and having all members of your team practice good OPSEC. And one of the most important parts of practicing good OPSEC is never talk to law enforcement. So I'm going to keep on using Signal since I'm immune to Fed propaganda. But thanks for watching the video. Like and comment to hack the algorithm and have a great rest of your day.